Matthew chapter number 14. We'll begin reading verse 22. The Bible says, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. When the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now tossed, in, and were now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter was come down out of the ship. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We certainly have enjoyed the good singing last night and this morning. Our hearts have been blessed. Lord, we know that singing sets the table for the preaching. And Father, we pray now that you'd use this unworthy vessel. And I pray you would certainly touch hearts now from the Word of God. Lord, if there's somebody here that couldn't have raised their hand and say, I want to thank you for saving me, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. God, if there's somebody here that is low, I pray you'd lift them. If there's somebody struggling, I pray you'd help them. God, if there's somebody here that is, uh, uh, Lord, faced uh, terrible things this week, and Lord, they've almost had to crawl to get to the house of God. God, I pray you do something special for them, and I pray that, God, you'd liberate them from whatever they've been facing. Now, Father, I pray that Jesus would be highly magnified and glorified for you alone are worthy. And Father, I do pray for all of our prayer requests, and those that are sick and couldn't be here. But God, for the next few minutes, would you do something for the people of God? And we'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. And amen. This chapter has three significant events. In verses 1 through 14, you find the miscarriage of justice when John the Baptist was beheaded. We find in verses 15 through 21... Uh, where the master uh, miraculously feeds the multitude uh, with five loaves uh, and a few fishes. Uh, we find uh, in the verses we read that he's the master of the seas. Uh, now listen, I want you to notice a few things as a way of introduction. Notice first of all the constraining in verse number 22. This is very important. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples uh, to get into the ship. Can I say this, that that means he forced them to get into the ship. Can I say it's so much better if we'll trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. They didn't want to get in the ship, Brother Aaron. They wanted to stay there and eat some more of them 12 baskets full uh, that that young lad was about ready to carry home. Uh, uh, they had enjoyed themselves uh, over sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him teach, Brother James. Uh, but they didn't want to get on the ship. Uh, can I say there's a lot of times uh, we don't want to go where God's leading, uh, but it'd be much better for us if we do. Uh, we find the constraining. Now, if you notice, uh, uh, look at the contrary winds in verse 24. The Bible says, But the ship was now uh, in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the waves, uh, or for the wind was contrary. Uh, can I say, uh, they're in the ship, Brother Josh, uh, and the winds start picking up, uh, and all of a sudden the waves get to slapping against the boat, uh, and the boat gets to uh, being tossed to and fro in the waves. Uh, I don't know about you, I've been on a lake in the midst of a storm blowing up, uh, and that boat gets a rocking, uh, and you don't 
know uh, if you're going to make it back to shore. Uh, hey, the wind was contrary to them. Can I say this? Uh, maybe the wind was contrary to them because uh, they were contrary to the will of God. Uh, uh, sometimes storms come into our lives because uh, uh, God has ordained it uh, uh, that others could see the great hand of God in our life in the midst of the storms. Uh, but can I say many times uh, storms come into our lives because of our own making uh, uh, because God has to get our attention uh, uh, to get us back where we should have been all along. Uh, we see the constraining. We see the contrary winds. Uh, notice the cry of fear. Look at verse 26. Uh, the Bible says, uh, And the, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, uh, they uh, were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. Can I say, you can get a storm sometimes, you don't even recognize God. Uh, they cried out for fear, thought they saw a ghost. Now can I say, on this ship were some seasoned fishermen. They'd been on the waters before. Matter of fact, these were familiar waters. But he wasn't familiar to them. Can I say, it's one thing to come in church and raise your hand and shout and have a good time, but you better be able to recognize him in the midst of your storms. Uh, I want you to notice, if you will, comfort spoken. Verse 27, but straightway Jesus spake unto them, uh, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Aren't you glad he can speak peace in the midst of your storms? Uh, Aren't you glad he'll give you a word when you're all messed up and tore up inside? Hmm? Thank God for the Lord. Huh? Hey, thank God for the comfort of the Holy Ghost huh? that just blow by our soul when we need comfort from the Lord. Uh, now, I want you to notice I'm going somewhere. Look at the contingent faith in verse number 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Isn't that like us? Lord, if you're really there, I got news, he's there. Lord, if, if you really want me to do I got news for you. He, he already has ordained it. But there's some contingent faith here. Peter says, if it really be you, Lord, can I say this? He should have known the Lord's voice. A lot of times we get all jacked up because we haven't exercised our spiritual ears to know his voice. Mm. he's speaking and we don't know mm. and then we want to give some conditions you know there is no conditions on faith I've used the illustration many times we can look at that green chair over there I know that chair uh, I remember custom ordering these chairs 20 years ago 18 years ago this chair is made of oak construction uh, uh, it is put together with dual dialed rods and screws uh, and then it's glued uh, it has dual density foam uh, uh, it has a Herculon fabric I can look at that chair I can touch that chair I can look at the legs on that chair and say I have faith if I sit in that chair that chair holds me that's not faith see I've had to figure it all out hmm? faith when you look at it and there aren't any legs and God said sit in it and you just sit in it hmm? Hmm? Uh, can I say it's not faith if we put conditions on it hmm? I spent a whole lot more time there than I needed to notice the call of the master in verse 29 and he said come notice there wasn't no big elaborate thing Notice God didn't write anything in the sky. He just spoke a word. He said, come. Hmm? Notice, if you will, the course of Peter. We find in verse 29, And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Uh, but when he saw the wind, boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Now don't throw off on Peter because he sank. He got out of the boat. Hmm? We're real quick to throw off on people stepping out and trying to do something for Jesus and it maybe don't go the way that uh, everybody had hoped, but at least they stepped out to do something. Mm. Uh, but notice the course of Peter. He stepped out on faith and he stepped forward in focus. He was watching Jesus. He's walking toward Jesus. But then he stopped when he saw the factors. When he saw the wind, he stopped took his eyes off Jesus, stopped walking. See, as long as we got our eyes on the Lord, everything goes good. When we take our eyes off him, we're going to get in trouble. He sank in fear, and he shrieked for the Lord to save him. And the Lord did. Uh, 
he said, Lord, save me. Now look at verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, he, he kind of rebukes him for losing his faith. Now, I don't know how far Peter was from Jesus, but I know Jesus wasn't far from Peter. He cried, Lord, save me. And the Lord stretched out his arm and lifted him out of the waves. With God's help this morning, I want to preach on this little thought when he reached down for me. Yeah. Huh? I didn't tell you I was in a mess, uh, yeah. but the Lord, uh, the Lord of all lords, uh, the King of glory, uh, Jesus, the one they just sang about, uh, uh, the darling Son of God, uh, on the third Saturday night of March 1974, uh, as a lost uh, uh, preacher's uh, grandson, uh, I was sitting in the Afton Baptist Church, uh, minding my own business. Uh, all of a sudden, he came by my way, uh, and he reached down to where I was. Uh, hey, he reached down unto me when I was lost, uh, without hope, uh, without God, uh, when I was defiled in sin. Uh, when I was desperate without hope, uh, hey, uh, when there was no way, uh, he made a way, uh, and he came to where I was. Uh, and that night, uh, I had enough sense to reach to him. Uh, hey, that old-fashioned altar, uh, I called on his name, uh, and he saved me there. Uh, I've been saved ever since, hallelujah. Uh, I bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, he didn't leave me in despair. Uh, he didn't leave me in my sins. Uh, he rescued me uh, and ransomed my soul uh, and made a way that I could be saved. Uh, he reached down to me when I was lost. I bless his holy name. And I ain't got over it yet. I, I echo what Brother Stephen said last night. Some of you look like you got over it. If you got over it, you never had it. You can't get over it. Uh, of uh, the great God in heaven who did fling those stars out on nothing and called them by name. Uh, the one who tells the sun when to shine. Uh, uh, the one who feeds the grasshoppers and feeds the ant and feeds the sparrows uh, and never missed one of their funerals. Uh, uh, the one who allows us to breathe. Uh, uh, the one who uh, uh, the earth is his footstool. Uh, that big, great, mighty, holy God. Uh, hey, if he can take up his abode in you uh, and you get over He's not the God of the Bible, my dear friends. Uh, reached down to me when I was lost. But can I say, since I've been saved, it's not always been a rose garden. And I found when I thought it was a rose garden, Brother Ron, there's a lot of thorns on them roses. But can I say this? He reached down to me when I was low. Mm. There's been times I've been in the valley only to find he's the lily of the valley. There's been times when I couldn't hold my head up high only to find that he, as the psalmist said, lifted my head. <laughs> hey, he's a great God. Uh, hey, there's been times I've been discouraged. Uh, hey, ready to quit. Uh, and he come by my way. Uh, and remind me, he didn't quit down the Via Della Rosa uh, when he was carrying my cross and my sin to Calvary. Uh, he went all the way uh, uh, for you and I. Uh, hey, my discouragement uh, turns into joy. Hallelujah. There have been times I've been defeated. Mm. Couldn't put one foot in front of the other. Just defeated. Say, what's the use? Uh, then here he comes again. Uh, and he just reaches down uh, and said, Hey, uh, the devil thought he had me too. Uh, I become that early Sunday morning. Uh, hey, I walked out of that uh, old grave uh, with the keys to death, hell in the grave. Uh, hey, uh, as long as you've got me, son, you're not defeated. Uh, we have the victory in him. Uh, I'm talking about he reached down to me when I was low. I don't know about you, there have been times I've been depressed. Yeah. Looking around this world, this sin-cursed world, uh, I'm standing and preaching a bunch of deadhead Baptists who don't care about the Bible. Uh, uh, I've been times I've been in revival, they should have called it survival. Uh, I, I mean, I just get depressed, like a God, is there anybody that cares about you? Uh, then all of a sudden, here he comes. 
He said, hey, do you remember what I told Elijah? I got 7,000 in Israel that hadn't bowed the knee to me. There's still folks that love me. Uh, there's still folks that worship me. Uh, I just keep preaching. Uh, just keep telling them. Uh, just keep pointing them to me. Uh, hey, he came to me when I was low. Came to me when I was lost. Can I say this? He came to me when I was loaded down. Mm. I don't know about you, but there's been times the cross seems too heavy. Now, I know what Paul wrote to Corinthians, and it'll not put more on us that we can bear, but there's been times I've stumbled under the load, wondering if I could carry it anymore. Can I say there's been times I've been daunted down with burdens, cares, and here he comes. So what did he do? Did he lift your burdens? No, he just lifted me. Huh? He's so big, he handled me and the burdens. Uh, hey, uh, uh, some of you wasn't here, but by the time we got this building built, you got to remember, we was in that little old building, uh, 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 and we got this building built. Uh, and Brother Ray, you know, it was seven months. Uh, in about five months we uh, uh, put up with some knucklehead contractors around here uh, now listen uh, 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 when we built this church uh, I've heard the horror stories brother Ron about building programs you don't want to build uh, can I say we didn't have any problems out of the congregation uh, uh, the folks was behind building the building uh, uh, we had a hundred percent vote uh, and they gave me and brother uh, 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 Bill Warnke liberty to make the decisions on the spot that we had it to do uh, uh, the congregation was a jewel in the building program. Uh, even Miss Mary didn't give me any problems during the building program. Uh, I mean, it was just uh, smooth sailing as far as the folks. Uh, uh, but dealing with it day in and day out and being out here every moment of every day uh, and looking at the work and trying to get it done, uh, by the time we got it done, I felt, Brother Clint, like I was carrying this building on my back. Went to a camp meeting that in January, and God gave me a message entitled, Within the Veil. And it was dealing with that high priest, where the former high priest had went behind the veil, and he didn't do things right, and his life was required, and they appointed a new high priest. And this is the first time he goes within the veil to offer up the sacrifice, the Passover sacrifice for the first time. And he's got the weight of all the people of Israel on him. Preached that message in that camp meeting, Brother Jim, and a preacher's wife came up a year later and told me, that, that message you preached last year, she said, I wrote that outline down. We've had it on our refrigerator. That message saved my marriage and saved my husband's ministry. She said, that message was just for us. I said, ma'am, I appreciate that. But no, that message was for me. He, that's when he came to me. Yeah. And he lifted me when I was loaded down and couldn't go another step. I'm glad he came to me. He's came to me when I've been loaded with doubts. I don't know about you, but there's sometimes the devil whisper in your ear and tell you you're not doing any good anymore. What you're doing isn't enough. And then here he comes. And he reaches down. He said, don't listen to the devil. He's a liar and the father of it. Uh, you just keep doing what I told you to do. Uh, when you get to the other side, you'll see that it was enough. Uh, and that I've been well pleased in what you've done, son. Uh, I'm talking about he's reached down to me when I was loaded. You all know he reached down to me when I was loaded with disease. Three years ago, my loving, darling wife, you know this, on Valentine's Day had the wonderful uh, uh, privilege, uh, her being a nurse, telling her husband he had cancer. Mm -mm. I didn't like that Valentine's present, Brother Steve. No, I didn't. No, no card, no flowers, cancer. Yeah, deal with it, huh? And she'll tell you, I told her, it didn't catch God by surprise. It'll be okay. You see, before I got the news from her, I got news from heaven. Because he'd already reached down. Huh? And you know the story. I mean, 
uh, I didn't have to have any radiation, didn't have to have uh, 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 any uh, 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 special treatment or anything like that. Uh, it was two quick surgeries, uh, cancer gone, God's been good. Uh, I mean, f uh, five weeks out of cancer, uh, uh, no, I was down there preaching to your folks down there in St. Louis, uh, Lucia. I mean, God was good, preached more that summer than I'd preached the three summers before, uh, and God's been good ever since. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to tell you, uh, uh, friend, you'll never go through anything uh, that he can't reach down uh, and deliver you from your troubles. Amen. I, get, I still get stuff. Tell me I'm a cancer survivor and these cancer self-help groups and all this. I didn't need those cancer support group. I had the Holy Ghost. Uh, I feel guilty when they tell me I'm a cancer survivor. I didn't have it long enough to be a survivor of it. Uh, you say, why? Because I know the great physician. But can I say he's reached down to me when I've been lonesome? Listen, uh, everybody wants to be the pastor. The, the pastor's life's not a charm life. You don't really have a whole lot of close friends because people don't want to hang out with the preacher. Well, you all don't want to hang out with me because you know I'm crazy. But I mean, they're, you know, there's folks who just don't like hanging out with the preacher because they might find out something on you and then get up and preach on it. <laughs> I tell you who's even got a more lonesome life than the preacher is the preacher's wife. She can't have a lot of close friends. She can't tell friends what's going on in the, the preacher's life. They lose respect for him. You see, you get an idea that the pastor walks on water. No. You get an idea that the pastor's made of some, something else, cut from a different cloth. No. Made out of the same stuff you are. Deals with some of the same stuff you deal with. And a lot of times he's dealing with more because he's watching for the souls of the flock. A lot of times when you're getting a good night's sleep, he's wide awake. And it's not because he drank some Diet Dr. Pepper's. Because he's watched some folks start drifting. And he gets a burden for them. He's praying for them. Trying to seek God's mind on how to deal with something. There's been times it's been lonesome. But here he came. Paul said, all men forsook me. Nevertheless, the Lord stood by me. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, when my friends have been distant, the Lord's always been a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Uh, when the foe has been domineering, huh, the master shows up and puts him in his place. Uh, hey, even when my faith has been dwindling, uh, he'll kindle a fire in my bones to bring me back to where I should have been all along. Uh, listen, one day he's going to reach down to loose me. He's going to loose me from this body of death. Mm, uh, he's going to take me out of here and give me a body fashioned like unto his. Huh? He's going to loose me from the battle. huh? He's going to loose me to the brightness of His glory. Yep. One day, hallelujah. Hmm? Sure. I love that song y'all sing when He steps out. Oh, I love that song. One day, He's going to step out. Yep. He's going to loose me. And I'll say this, I'll be done. Listen. He reached down for me, and He's reached down for you for one reason. Because He loves us. I don't understand why he loves us. I don't know why he puts up with us. You know, he'd be a justified, holy God to kick us all off into hell even after we've been saved for things we've thought, said, and done. But he's not going to because he said he wouldn't. He did give us everlasting life. Uh, why? Because he loves us. You know, everybody in this world is seeking for somebody to care about them. I've got good news. Jesus cares. He's loved you with an everlasting love. He loves you in spite of you. When you look in the mirror, all you see is your faults and failures. When He looks at you, He looks at you in love. He don't look at faults and failures. He looks at you because He loves you. And when you get born again, He doesn't see any faults in you ever again. All He does is see Himself. He loves you. 
And if you'd ever get that down in the gable into your soul that he really loves you, yeah. it'll change your life. We'd have revival if we just fall back in love with Jesus. Right. Oh, he loves you, friend. Yeah. Said, preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. But I do know this, Jesus loves you. Right. Preacher, you don't know what I've done. I, I, I know, but I do know this, Jesus loves you. Amen. Preacher, you don't know where I've been. But I know Jesus loves you. And friend, he'll save you if you give him your heart and life. You all know my friend, Brother Jerry Allen, Pastor Old Rugged Cross, Baptist Church Center in Shelby, North Carolina. His own testimony, he'll tell you him and Brother Rocky Shelton used to fight chickens together. They used to do a bunch of other stuff together. But Brother Rocky got saved. And when Brother Rocky got out of jail, Brother Jerry was the first person he went to. And all Brother Rocky told Jerry was, Jesus loves you. And he just kept telling him that. And Brother Jerry couldn't get over it. He couldn't get over it. Mm, Jesus loves me. And that one Sunday morning, Brother Rocky up singing in the choir. Here comes Brother Jerry. Come into church. Sat there while the choir was singing. He couldn't sit no more. He made his way to the old-fashioned altar. Got born again. Amen. Because he realized Jesus loves him. Amen. Friend, do you know that Jesus loves you? This morning, if you're not saved, he's reaching down to you in that love to let you know you can be saved today. He loves you and wants to save you. He went to Calvary and shed his life's blood and was tortured and beaten beyond recognition because he loves you and he wants to save you. He rose again, proving he was God, proving that he was who he said he was because he wants to save you because he loves you. He don't want you to die and go to hell. If you die and go to hell, you're going to die and go to hell over Jesus' love. Right. Because he loves you. And he wants to save you. If you're here today not saved, in a moment we're going to have an invitation. We're going to invite you to come. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. I didn't know how to be saved either. But if you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. But can I say this? Salvation starts with the first step. The moment you believe in your heart, that's when God will save you. If you'll take that first step, I promise you, friend, he'll help you make the rest of them. And he'll be that friend that stick it close to my brother. If you're here today and you're saved, but maybe you feel like a second-class Christian, there's no such thing. We're all going first class. But you've let the devil beat on you. You've let the world beat on you. You've let yourself beat on you. Maybe you just need to come and let the Lord love on you because he does love you uh, and he misses that intimate fellowship you once had with him maybe here today and you got a bird why don't you come roll him over on him he can handle him. maybe today you're here and you're low why don't you let him lift you why don't you come this morning and let God do a work in your heart he's reaching down today and he's reaching down for you all we need to do is reach to him will you do that through faith today will you give him your heart today Will you let him transform you today that when you leave here, folks will know you've been with Jesus. He loves you. And he's reaching for you. I want the Phillips family to come back and sing a song of invitation. I don't care what you all sing. But I tell you what, he's a great God. And he cares about you today. And as they're coming, let's all stand. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. We're thankful that you reached down for even me. Now, Father, bless this invitation. You know the needs and the hearts of everyone here today. We just pray the Holy Ghost do a work. Certainly, God, if somebody needs to be saved, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Blessed now. We'll praise you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.